Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. The meeting of the Youth Education and Cultural Affairs Committee of Community Board 2 is called to order. The meeting is being recorded, as you just heard, uh, because of the public access, and it's part of the New York State Open Meeting Law. So before I get started, we're going to introduce the committee members and everyone else that's on the call. So um, I'll start with myself. I'm Dorothea Thompson Manning. I am the uh, co-chair of the Youth Education and Cultural Affairs Committee. Um, Nick, I see you, so you can go next. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Nick Ferreira. I'm one of the uh, committee and board members. Welcome. Mm -hmm. are, are we tagging people, Dorothea, or are you? Uh, uh, whoever wants to speak up next is fine. I just happen to be looking at you. <laughs> I'm Santia Polissier, committee member and board member. I'm Madison Chang, committee member and board member. Uh, anyone else that's a member of the, of the committee or are the rest just to guess? Our youth members are on. Any other members on? If not, we'll start with our guests. If you can just um, say who you are. I see someone from BAM. Just introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Ellen Lazinski. I'm here on behalf of uh, BAM, the Brooklyn Academy of Music in Fort Greene. Thank you. Next, we have Stoked Mentoring. Is that person online? Good evening, everyone. My name is Janelle Bartley, and I represent Stoked Mentoring in Brooklyn, and we have sites in Chicago and Los Angeles. Thank you for okay. having me. Uh, St. Nicholas Alliance. Is someone here from St. Nicholas Alliance? Yes. Hi, my name is Gabby, and I'm representing um, St. Nicholas Alliance. Okay. Are there any guests um, that would just like to say their names before we get started? Any other guests? I see some names that I don't recognize. Okay, some of them are our youth, our youth board members are on. Oh. Uh, yeah, if they want to introduce themselves. Yes. Um, the youth board members who are on, please um, just announce your name. Let us know who you are. I'm Abby. I'm a youth member. Hi, Abby. Who's next? Anyone else? Hi, I'm Madison. I'm a youth council member. Mm -hmm. I'm Sakura Grasha. I'm a youth council member as well. Okay. Is that it? Sakura, is there a reason why we can't see you or you'd rather be hidden tonight? Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm currently on my way home, but as soon as I get there, I will turn on my camera. <laughs> okay, because I, I don't know you, so I just wanted to see what you look like. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, if not, I'm just gonna ask for someone to approve the agenda, one of our members. Nicholas, uh, can I have a second, please? I second. Santia, um, I guess by consensus, if there's no changes to the agenda, it'll be considered approved. Now we have minutes. Um, I think we have a quorum for if we wanted to do the minutes from um, January 22nd. Did everyone have a chance to read the, the minutes? If there are no edits, then we can accept the minutes as presented. Um, if there are any corrections, let me know. Hearing nothing, then we'll accept the minutes uh, by consensus. I want to welcome all of our guest speakers tonight, and we have quite a few. We usually don't have three. So because we have three, and there's probably going to be questions that everyone would like to ask, if possible, I'd like you to try to uh, keep your uh, speeches to about 10 minutes which will give everyone a chance to uh, ask questions and that um, we, you know, we won't run out of time. I don't think we will, but I think 10 minutes should be enough time. If you need more, take it, but I'm gonna ask that you do try to keep it 
to 10 minutes. And I'm gonna start with um, Ellen. I'm gonna to try to get your name correctly. Ellen Lazinski from the Brooklyn Academy of Music. That was perfect. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me and welcoming me this evening. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share, well, before I begin, I'll just quickly, an overview of BAM. Um, uh, I've been at BAM for over 10 years now, uh, but BAM has been in existence since 1861. So <laughs> I, I think of myself as being a long time staffer, but uh, not compared to you know over 160 years of history. We've been in Fort Greene since 1908, the, the Opera House at Lafayette Avenue uh, in between St. Felix and Ashland Place uh, has been there since 1908. We were actually originally in Brooklyn Heights and that building burned down uh, in the late 1800s. And there's actually footage of it in the National Archives, which is really interesting. Um, that's a little bit of a non sequitur, but uh, I think it's, it's fascinating that they actually captured it on film. Um, so uh, BAM is a large uh, multi, uh, uh, we do dance, theater, cinema, visual arts, uh, any kind of performing arts you can imagine uh, has been presented on our stages. We currently have three theaters. The Opera House has a large 2000 seat theater uh, along with four cinemas uh, of varying sizes. Our Harvey Theater, which is on Fulton Street, uh, seats 900 people. And then our smallest theater is in the Fisher Building on Ashland Place. Uh, it's a former Salvation Army building that we reconfigured uh, and opened in 2012. And that theater uh, can hold about 250 people. It's a flexible space. Uh, so it's used for lots of different experimental theater uh, ideas, music. Uh, we also use it for you know big parties. It's where we have our pride party every year, every booty, every June. Uh, so between those three spaces, we were able to present a wide variety of, of work. Um, you know, companies from overseas presenting opera and ballet uh, and performers from you know right here in Brooklyn presenting world premiere work that they've been workshopping around the corner. Uh, so every season brings something new, um, but it's been pretty consistent for the last 160 years. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now and just show some highlights of our upcoming programming, um, including uh, our youth programming and our senior programming. And share, okay. Uh, every time this works, I'm like, oh my gosh, it worked. <laughs> So um, I'm going to start by talking about our senior programs, which are our long running, really robust programs uh, that we have consistently been in one form or the other uh, for, you know, since the 70s. But the, the programs that we have now have been up and running for over a decade. Uh, so those programs, I'm sorry, this is a lot of text. I'm not going to read it, but um, I'll just sort of talk through it. Uh, we hold a monthly senior cinema program uh, for uh, anyone 65 and older can come to a free screening in our cinemas. It's every uh, third Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, we also have senior socials, which are dance parties. Um, we have a jazz uh, disco. We're introducing a gospel uh, brunch this year for the first time, or, or I guess we're actually bringing it back. We used to do it in the 80s, but um, it feels new. Uh, and we also have brush and brunch, which are sort of like the paint and sip parties, but we do them during the day over brunch. Um, in addition to the senior socials that we do quarterly, every uh, summer in, in June, we do a big party for LGBTQ seniors. So last year it was actually outdoors on the 300 Ashland Plaza. Um, this year we're bringing it back in, so indoors. Uh, it's a little bit more comfortable with air conditioning and things like that. Uh, we're also expanding our senior programming this year uh, to add a senior book club featuring authors. So it'll sort of, we, we have humanities programming currently where we bring in authors to talk about their work. And so this will be geared specifically towards seniors, which is going to be really exciting. Um, we're always hoping to reach new constituencies of seniors. So uh, we're trying to figure out how to reach uh, seniors with Alzheimer's and dementia. And we're also always looking to bring in more veterans. That's, that's a big population that we wanna work with. Um, so those are you know, maybe things for the committee to think about in terms of 
if you are aware of any groups that, that could benefit from our programming. I'm gonna quickly move on to um, our education programming. Those are our Brooklyn Interns for Arts and Culture. Uh, it's a pretty consistent program that I'll be talking about. So uh, we engage with a lot of students every year. Um, I will say because of the pandemic, everything had to go remote. I'm sure the students on this call are familiar with that. Our education programming was already partially remote. We were reaching classes around the world through um, you know, Zoom already. So I had, this is an, I had never heard of Zoom before the pandemic and our education programming was already offered on Zoom. So we were able to pivot pretty quickly and pretty seamlessly to being able to offer things to students at home. Uh, and the rest of our departments actually learned a lot from our education department about how to you know, transfer our programming to remote programming. Um, so that was you know, just, it's just amazing luck that we are already doing so much um, digitally. Um, some of our longstanding programs include Word Sound Power, which is a hip hop poetry showcase, uh, Arts and Justice, which is a creative writing program um, that also includes theater work. Uh, and every year there's a different theme that students work and create work around. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, our Brooklyn Interns for Arts and Culture, which uh, we have high school students who come in um, and have you know, full internships uh, at BAM. They also get career development advice, advice on applying to colleges. Uh, we place them with mentors. And I have to say like the internship work they do is, is real. I have worked with these interns. Um, they're, they're in high school, but it's not like we, they're, they're given real tasks to do and real work to do. So it's, it's a really, I think, uh, deep program. We, we are working with them as they move through college as well. So we, we stay in touch with all of our all alumni and it's, it's really robust. It's really in depth. And then finally, I just wanted to highlight, um, we're bringing music programming back to all of our theaters. So uh, we'll be in the Opera House, the Harvey and the Fisher. You can see the lineup. Um, it's really exciting. We, we're the Brooklyn Academy of Music and, and our seasons don't always include robust music programming. So to have these great concerts coming um, is really exciting. Um, so that's uh, just a snapshot of some of the programming we're gonna be doing this spring. Uh, and I'm happy to talk more about any questions you have or any, any other programming you'd like to know about. Thank you for your presentation. It was very informative. And now I'm going to ask, uh, starting with committee members, um, if you have someone has a question for Ms. Lozinski, please, um, you can either raise your hand or just ask her and give your name and then ask her the question, if there are any questions now. I, I just saw Barbara's question in the chat. Um, about new theaters opening, so when that might be on? Yeah, that's that's a big question. <laughs> uh, so I think you're probably all aware of the 300 Ashland building. It's the building that has the Apple store and the Whole Foods. Within that building, um, the developers uh, we're told by the city to set aside space for cultural uh, organizations. So BAM, the Brooklyn Public Library, mm -hmm. Mokata and 651 Arts all receive space within that building. Um, due to the pandemic and just, you know, creating new space within a building that's already been built. It's, it's not like we were building this for ourselves. We were working within the space that we were given. Um, there have been a lot of delays. We're hoping to be in those spaces early next year. Um, that's not official, but um, we were supposed to be there by now. <laughs> I had like dreams of having an office in those spaces, but it's, uh, it's very, very delayed. But within those spaces, um, all of our archives will live there. Our archives are currently um, at 1000 Dean Street. Um, our archives go back to the 1860s. So our archives are really, it's a history of BAM, but it's also a history of Brooklyn. It's also a history of the United States. Uh, we've had you know, incredible speakers over the years, um, Frederick Douglass, presidential candidates. Um, so it's, it's really, um, it's a lot of material and that will finally be in a home really close to the rest of our buildings. And we're also getting um, some new movie theaters, which is just gonna help us sort of 
stay competitive in the landscape of Alamo and Nighthawk and all of these, you know, new brand, brand new theaters that are going up around Brooklyn. Um, BAM continues to have the lowest movie theater ticket price in the city. If you're a member, which you can be a member for free with an IDNYC ID, our movie tickets are $7. So uh, it's it's hard to beat that, um, and that's something that we really like to keep that price very low. Our regular tickets aren't terrible either, but the the membership, which you can do for free, really keeps it you know very accessible. So we're excited to get more um, space for our movie theaters, and they're also going to function as sort of like community spaces as well. They'll be very flexible. Uh, anyone so, else with a question? So I was just. Curious if a follow up then about the archives and sort of what kind of public accessibility there may be, seeing as how history rich that is. Yeah. So uh, currently, if you if you had something that you were curious about, um, our archives are open. You know, by appointment, um, we have great archivists who have you know complete understanding of what we have and are always happy to share that with the public. We do have occasional archival exhibitions in our different spaces, but the new archives are really going to be. Um, much more accessible to the general public. There's always going to be an exhibit outside the, you know, the archive space highlighting something from the archives. Um, I'd also be happy to set up a tour of our archives for any of you that are interested. Our, our archivists are just so knowledgeable. They're really great at tours. <laughs> um, so I would, I would be, you know, happy to um, set up a tour of our spaces or of our archives. Thank you for getting that on. <laughs> our annual agenda maybe if we can absolutely yeah i would i would love that mm -hmm. any other questions um i have one i wanted to give everyone else an opportunity to speak first uh the movie theaters that you say that you're going to open up is there a number is it going to be one or two more do you have any ideas where they would be situated yeah, so um, when you look at the building as it's constructed, there are those like boxes that pop up off the side onto, onto Ashland Place. The theaters will be in each of those boxes. Next time you're walking past, if you look up, you'll see them. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to misspeak. It's, it's three theaters. One of them is very small. It'll be for local filmmakers who are doing screenings of their, their work that they're you know working on. So um, potentially like private screenings, uh, smaller events, not necessarily something that like we're going to be generating revenue off of, but we wanted a space for artists to come and show their work and have the opportunity to have a space to have a formal screening. The other, I think there's two other theaters. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't know this off the top of my head. I've been working on this project for so long and then sort of handed it off. And I, I don't know exactly where we landed, but it'll be at least three um, but like I said, one is a smaller space that's sort of really geared for artists to use. Um, we're excited because these spaces are gonna be very accessible. So our senior cinema might move over to that space, which mm -hmm. is, I think will be much more comfortable for a lot of our seniors. Okay. The, um, as Nick was saying, the archival, um, that is something that sounds very exciting, very thing, you know, very thrilling. And I think we all love to see that. Is there um, a way that um, you could maybe um, contact the office with a little bit more information as to um, how that could be done if there are certain days, certain hours, and maybe we could arrange for our committee, instead of having a Zoom meeting, if everyone is okay with venturing outside, I know sometimes I'm a little hesitant, but if they're okay with, you know, going and, you know, wear your mask or whatever you need to do, if there's something that, that, that can be done sometime this year. So if you don't mind, I'd appreciate if you would get in touch with our office and um, just let us know and someone will yeah, get back absolutely. to us. Um, that sounds do. really exciting. I have to say that the tours of our spaces where we bring you behind the scenes and you get to go out onto our stages are really interesting. I've been on those before with volunteers and they are, you know, it's, it's incredible to stand in the opera house. So I'll, I'll mm -hmm. offer a bunch of different options. The archives are a little bit more, they're really interesting, but it's definitely like looking in boxes at things. So I think there's mm -hmm. two different options and, and I'd be happy to explore them both. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, before we let you go, any other questions? 
Okay. Now you are free to stay for the rest of the meeting if you'd like, or if you have something else that you need to do and you would like to leave, that will be fine too. Thank you very much for the presentation. Really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate being okay. invited. Um, and if anyone has any questions that they think of afterwards, please feel free to reach out. Uh, I am going to jump off because I think I can make it in BAM <laughs> okay. to BAM for night's performance, which is really exciting. So, um, okay. Well, what's going on tonight? <laughs> uh, it's a dance uh, performance by Kyle Abraham, uh, who is a young oh, okay. choreographer, uh, and that is starting tonight. Uh, and I think it's running through the weekend. And I didn't think I was going to make it, but I think I have time oh, okay. to get there. So now this is exciting. Can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm a I'm a BAM member, and I don't even look at the things I should look at. So I yeah, look at it and reach act, out if I you get ever my act come. together. We have okay. a lot of stuff this season, so I, I hope there's something there that catches your eye. Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate Take it. Take care. Have thank you so evening. much. Bye-bye. Okay. So next we're going to have um, Janelle Barkley from Stoked Mentoring. Ms. Barkley. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Janelle Bartley, and I am the Director of Operations at Stoked Mentoring. I am new to the organization, and I believe this is our first time being invited to your meeting. So we put together a presentation to tell you all about who we are and what we do. So I'm going to share my screen. Can you see it? It looks like it's just loading. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a little bit slow. Okay, I'm just glad it's not my computer. You know. <laughs> no, it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> just let me know when it's loaded. Oh, Zoom. Uh, Janelle, let's let's try uh, on stopping and restarting. Okay, try it one more time. Don't worry, it's not you. Okay. Okay, let's try again. You know technology. Well. <laughs> you know, Taya, I see Jan uh, Janelle's name and then I see her. Could that have something to do with it? Is she on twice? She is on twice, but the... It worked at sound check. So let's see if it worked before. Just, um, Janelle, one thing that might help is if there's maybe a bandwidth issue on your end, could you stop sharing your video feed? And that might free up some bandwidth for your video for your screen share. Okay. So if you right. So just stop sharing your face and then maybe your screen share will work. Maybe that's let's see. This happens all the time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Huh. Well, I'm sorry that it's not loading. I had some great graphics for you all, um, but I can start talking a, a little bit about Stoke. Um, Stoke Just, is a nonprofit organization. Janelle, do you, want, do you want to try and send me the presentation? And maybe I could run the slides for you? Sure. OK. Mm -hmm. Um, if you email that over to me, okay. and actually, um, unless you have, I don't know what your time is like tonight, but we could maybe switch order and have St. Nick's go first. No, I have time. I can stay for the meeting. Oh, so I okay. Agree. Maybe we could do that. Ms. Thompson Manning, is that okay. okay with you? Okay. So That's Janelle, fine. That's you, fine. Mm -hmm. you email me your so, slides. I'll, I'll get that together on the back end. Okay. Abby, are so you ready? Now, <laughs> We're going to have um, Gabrielle Sheridan from St. Nick's Alliance speak. Hi, Sheridan. Um, so my name is Gabby and I work for St. Nicholas Alliance. Um, we are a nonprofit organization that um, provides a lot of different programs for, um, for youth. We're currently recruiting for two programs right now, our construction program and our IT program. Um, we're mainly focused on youth 18 to 24. Um, our construction program is actually starting March 7th. 
Um, it's seven weeks long. Um, each participant will receive, will receive their OSHA 30 site safety, flagger and scaffolding, F F60, and when they're finished completing the program, they will receive help finding full-time employment. Um, our IT program is starting April 25th. It's 13 weeks long. Um, they're gonna be receiving their comp TIA and they will be um, completing an internship so they can get um, work experience in the field. Um, so yeah, that's actually pretty much all I had. Um, does anyone have any questions for me? Any questions? I definitely did. Uh, two amazing sounding opportunities. So these are free of charge to participants? They are free programs. Um, okay. the participants do not have to pay anything to participate. They're free. Um, they actually, the participants actually get paid during the programs. Uh, the, in, the internship is paid and um, there's also, um, they get stipends as well. And, and are these in, uh, like in-person trainings? Is there specific locations they're going to for these different opportunities, Gabby? Um, yeah, so, um, so for, um they're both in person so for construction for example like they'd be going we have a teacher that will teach them all the stuff get their cer cer certifications and everything um we also will be working closely with them um we have case managers um that will work closely to make sure that participants are attending um making sure that they're participating and that um they finish the program. If I may, Gabby, can I um, just expand a bit more? Yeah. Hi, <laughs> hi everyone. Um, my name is Shamita and I'm the case manager with St. Nick's Alliance. Um, me and Gabby work really close together and um, I'm just really here for support. You're doing a great job, Gabby. Let me um, just say a little about my, my, my normal spiel. Um, so we are with the train and earn program and we do offer several types of trainings. For example, we're currently um, doing the home health day training. Next in March, we have the construction and April we have the IT training. Our office is located in Bushwick, Brooklyn, New York. The address is 790 Broadway, Brooklyn, New York. Um, and the trainings and will, will begin um, at that office. We do have other providers and they will be going elsewhere to do the actual trainings, but 790 Broadway is our office location. They can come, anybody can come at any time to sign up for, for those um, certifications. Um, also, yes, if you are a participant, you do get weekly stipends of $100 until the paid internship begins. And when the internship begins, you just get paid um, minimum wage um, and you have to fulfill approximately 200 hours. Um, but the goal is to have all of our youth have a full-time um, opportunity at the end of their trainings, as well as have um, those certifications on their resume. We do work readiness, we do resumes, cover letters, mock interviews, we talk about workforce um, rules. Um, we, we, get, we get our youth prepared to really succeed in, in life. Um, so that is what we are specifically um, recruiting for. But um, at St. Nick's at our location, we also have an adult education program as well as a youth um, opportunity so that they can receive their HSC or, or, or GED. We do direct employment. We do um, construction trainings for adults, just adults. Um, we do a lot, we have tech programs, um, but me and Gabby are just recruiting for our construction and IT um, program is coming up. Um, if you're interested, um, I'll put my email. Gabby will put her email as well. And reach out. Um, we are here to help and um, and ready for, for use between the ages 16 to 24 to take advantage of us and the program. Because that's what we're here for. Well, thank you, Shamita. What were the ages? I, at least on mine, it cut out for a second. Yes, 16 to 24. With the construction, we are leaning towards 18 to 24 because of employment. Um, but 
you'll definitely be able to receive um, those certifications. Do the students need, uh, those who are getting the jobs, do they have to have, a, what type of education is required? Uh, must they be uh, high school graduates or no, there's does it the matter? Only, the, only pro, the only requirement is that you have to be 16 to, tw 16 to 24. We, we, and just be able to commit. Um, BYCD mm -hmm. says that you cannot be working or in school, but if you're working part-time and you're work or in school part-time and you know that you can commit the next seven weeks into our program, we will take you, we will work with you, we will um, but also hold you accountable as well. Okay, the IT training, uh, who do you have certain uh, companies that provide that or how is that done? Yeah, With so the, we don't actually, uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, we don't actually do the, the we don't do, we don't train um, for the, like the OSHA 30 or the, the scaffolding or the comp CIA. Um, we have providers that do that. Um, but what normally happens during the training or the, the program, for example, with construction and IT, the first two weeks is work readiness. So we, we, we see where you at with your resume, your cover letter. By the time that two weeks is done, you have a folder with knowing how to do a thank you letter, a resignation letter. Mm -hmm. that you we, got, we got it all so that you, and we also you know put those certifications on your new resume so that you can be prepared for that job after the certification. After the next two weeks, it's normally the training. So HHA, for example, is a three week training. Construction would be much longer. Um, um, IT is the longest training. So, and then after they complete the training, then they go right into the internship and then you have to complete the internship. Once you complete the internship, then we host a little graduation, a nice graduation. And now it's time to start um, getting a job. Let's apply for a job. Let's see if their internship is gonna hire you full time. Or do you so want to this go back? makes everyone, this is like uh, uh, making ready for the future as far as the training, helping people to find job, yep. uh, making it a little easier for them by giving them, you know, show them how to do the resumes and I guess interviewing and whatever else they need to right. be it's prepared. Work readiness. work readiness. Very, very good. Okay. Any other questions? I'm sorry, just one more. It sounds... How long was that? Yes, go ahead. Longest uh, program sounds like uh, the IT one, right? What yes. What is that from the beginning of your work readiness to say them um, participating in and finishing an internship? Um, I, that's you don't have to be. I'm no one holding you other than Madison and the minutes, which are public. Uh, I'm teasing you. <laughs> <laughs> But it's approximately 13 weeks long. Um, that's that's that would be that that would be yeah, it's about 13 weeks long. At least 12, over three months, three to four months, we're saying. Right. Okay. But okay. it also depends on um, your availability on the internship. We have some kids that do every day, eight hours a day, and you fulfill that that the the hours faster than somebody that might do it part time or or two hours a day. So it it honestly depends. It, it depends on on the, the youth. Because that was the 200 hours you said. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, about 175. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other questions for Ms. Bahir and um, Ms. Uh, I don't want to get Sheridan. Any other questions? If not, ladies, thank you very much. And as I said before, you can feel free to continue with us. Or if you have something else you need to do, um, you may disconnect. It's up to oh, you. We'll stay on. Thank you very much. Very informative. Stay on. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Okay. So now we're going to get back to. I'm going to. I'm looking at my. I'm looking at two different things here. I'm on my computer and I'm on my iPad. So <laughs> now we're going to get back to Miss um, Bartley. Um, uh, how does it? How's it going, um, Taya? Ms. Bartley, I am standing by. You just feel free to tell me next slide when you're ready, okay? Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right. Okay, so I see that my 
PowerPoint had tons of pictures, so I know that that was the difficulty, but I'm glad we worked that out. Um, Stoked, I just here to tell you a little bit about Stoked. It is a nonprofit organization that has served underprivileged youth for 17 years in New York City, Los Angeles, and Chicago. It was created in 2004 to pull kids out of their daily environment and empower them through mentoring and action sports. So if you go to the next slide, um, stoked means to be excited, motivated, inspired, and energized in action sp sports culture. It is an acronym for our core values, which is success, teamwork, openness, kudos, energy, and determination. Um, we collaborate with schools, community organizations, and a network of dedicated mentors to bridge the opportunity gap for low-income youth and prepare them for a vibrant, fulfilled life after high school. We build confidence and strengthen social-emotional bonds by immersing youth in action sports cultures and after-school programs and weekend activities. Um, our mission is to create a community of fearless leaders through mentoring, opportunity, and action. If you go to our next slide, I'll introduce you to our founders, which is Steve LaRosilier and Salima Masekela, who put together this organization to provide access and introduce action sports to Black and Brown youth. Um, if you go to our next slide, I can introduce you to our new president, Dr. Patricia Charlemagne. Um, she joined in February, and we're still in February. I feel like we're already past the month, maybe because of the nice weather we're experiencing today. Um, but she is stoked to improve youth outcomes through action and research on a national level. Dr. Pat is a seasoned nonprofit executive with an amazing track record. She is an attorney and received her doctorate in education and organizational leadership from UPenn. So we are excited for what she's going to do for the next uh, iteration of Stoked. Um, if you go to the next slide, we offer four programs. We have middle school and high school programs, and um, our alumni are engaged through our pipeline program up until age 24. So our large number of our staff currently started off as participants and then as coaches and beyond. So we have um, our middle school program where we have skateboard instruction and project-based activities, um, including STEM and SEL, and you really dive into sports culture. And then our high school students participate in our Storks board and brand building program. So in the picture, you see a young man building a skateboard from scratch, um, actually gluing the wood together, sanding it down, and then decorating it. And then we all, in that age group, um, talk about time management, teamwork, determination, and we create a brand based on a social impact that matters to the youth. If you go to the next slide, we have our weekend program, which provides high school students the opportunity to connect with their mentors and coaches in the ways, in the streets, in the slopes, to learn how to surf, swim, skate, and snowboard in addition to community service projects. So we have done street and beach cleanups and mural painting and tree planting. If you go to our next slide, um, our after school program provides one-to-one -one mentoring, skills building and leadership development, job training and a connection to action sports culture. Um, the next slide will show you that a majority of our students are diverse and come from low income communities 97% are Black Indigenous people of color, and 42% identify as female, two communities that historically don't participate in action sports, but we are very proud that we have been engaging women, young women and um, people of color into this sport that is usually not accessible to them. If you go to the next slide, you'll see that um, Historically, action sports have seen low engagement, but we um, view issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion um, as inseparable from action sports. So we discuss all of that in our next slide. Um, our impact, we have served since the beginning 
over 6,000 youth and have provided over 570 hours of activities. All of our students graduate and we serve youth from three cities. And my last slide talks about our, um, our growth. So Stolt has many companies to thank for supporting our growth and impact in our mission, Vans, the American manufacturer of skateboarding shoes and related apparel is one of our corporate sponsors aimed at growing BIPOC participation and representation in action sports. Almost 30 Vans employees have signed on to the career pipeline to lead diversity, equity and inclusion efforts. So we're very excited. And my last slide is just to say thank you. And I can take any questions that you may have. I, like I mentioned in the beginning, I am brand new to the organization. So any question that you may have that I cannot answer today, feel free to reach out to me. My um, email is in the chat. Um, any committee members first, if you have any questions for Ms. Bartley, feel free. I will keep it going. Um, <laughs> hi, Ms. Bartley, thank you. Cool, cool name, great organization. Uh, I was wondering, I saw on your website earlier um, about the Rockaways. I was wondering if you had any programs though that uh, operate in Far Rockaway. Yes, so um, when our youth go surfing, it's usually in Rockaway Beach. Mm. So that's, that's the destination for the surfing uh, right. program. Thank you. You're welcome. Any of our any youth other board? I'm sorry, Dorothy. Why are you? Oh, no, 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 go ahead. No, like, go ahead, Nick. I want, I was just, see. you know, <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want, I wonder if they, it sounds like this sounds like such cool stuff. I wish I knew about it when I was young. <laughs> Where do they do the um snowboarding? Um, great question. Is that a particular city? <laughs> yeah. Great question. I um, most recently, as a director of operations, helped with um, our snowboarding in California. They did it over Super Bowl weekend, and mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sure they do it in maybe in the Catskills. I can get that answer to you. I just wondered where the snow was. That's so all. Yeah, up in the mountains somewhere. So I'm sure we pack yeah. up like a busload of our youth and take them to where the snow is. Nice and fresh. Okay. And um, other questions? Any other questions from um, any committee members? If we have other guests on the line, do you have any uh, questions for Ms. Bartley? Okay, hearing none, I want to thank you for hanging around a little longer. I'm glad that we got to see your presentation. And um, we learned a lot about a, an organization that we were not familiar with. So thank you very much. And as I said to everyone else, feel free to stay on if you would like, or if you have something else to do, you're certainly free to, um, you know, uh, um, you know, get off the line. It's up to you. No, I will stay for the remainder of the meeting. And if you have any questions, my emails in the okay. chat. Okay. All you. right. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, the next is um, committee business. Is there anything that has been discussed previously that we need to go over now? Um, anything Betty may have brought up? Um, whatever comes to mind. Okay, this is going to be a real quick meeting tonight. <laughs> uh, community foreman, is there anyone on the line who is not a member of the committee who would like to uh, say something, tell us about an organization or a little something that you would like uh, this uh, committee to know about? If so, just introduce yourself and then tell us what it is you'd like us to know. Okay, as they say, radio silence. So <laughs> is there anything anyone would like to say right now anyone that's a, um, a committee member that they'd like to bring to our attention? Ms. Thompson Manning, I can offer a very brief update. 
Uh, I just want to say that the Youth Council has been very communicative. They've been going deep on their research. Uh, okay. I, I owe them some resources. There has been um, a request that I'm happy to fulfill to set up a Slack channel for them to communicate on because going through tons of threaded emails is a pain in the butt. Um, I'm very pleased that at least two of them have already selected, um, actually maybe more than two of them, have so already selected a second uh, board oh, committee. Um, and two of them have really great ideas for a final project presentation that I'm super excited about. Um, so we're actually, I, I know I keep reminding you all of the timeline, but we're one third of the way through your six months already. But I think we're on, um, we're on track. They're making good progress. I would say I, I need to carve out a little more time to be more communicative with them in the next week, which I will do. But they've been great. Well, let me ask you what uh, committees were chosen? What did they, uh, the ones who chose other committees, what were they? Do you know? Um, I don't know offhand. Um, but oh, okay. I actually, I'm going to, I'm going to send a, a report to the full committee. But I, I'll, I'll try to remember. I think it was ED and E. Actually, it was very neatly distributed. One for Hess, one for ED and E, one for Parks. What was the fourth one? I don't like to come off mic. I'll get you a full no. report. See, are you all shy? <laughs> Who picked what? I'm going to start calling on people. My teacher is coming out. Thank Your you. Your teacher I is see. coming out. Oh, yeah, my teacher is coming out. So, don't make yes. me come out. I see you all came off. Madison, Sakura, jump in. Don't be so formal. Just jump um, I was the one who picked Hess as my next committee meeting. Awesome. Um, I'm hoping to work with the public transportation and sort of public safety committee. Okay. You being shy because you're not working with us. <laughs> That's right, fun. because uh, <laughs> they're working with Taya <laughs> most of the time. But it. you're part of this committee. So, okay. you know, when we ask if you have questions, is there anything you'd like to discuss? We want you to do that. That's why you're part of this. This is why we started this. And we don't want you to be shy. Um, if you're shy, no one will ever know you're around. No one will ever know what you have to say. No one will know your thoughts, your aspirations, your hopes, and they won't know you. So you have to speak up and let your word, you know, your voice be heard. This way, everyone hey, will say, oh, yeah, hey, man, I remember her that. and I know what she had to say. <laughs> Yeah, don't wait for okay. people to make space for you. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Jump space, in and say, in say what you have to say. <laughs> okay. Love so uh, thank you very much, everyone. Now, I'm going to ask is um, if, if there's nothing else that has to be said or that someone wants to say, I'm going to ask for someone to just uh, make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Madison wants to, okay, can I have a second? A second. Since Tia, thank you very much everyone for joining our meeting and I'll see all of you next month. Good night. Thank you, Dorothea. Good to see everybody. Okay.